Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Comic Source Podcast. I'm your host, Jace. This is another Spawn Daily episode. We're going to be talking about Spawn number 86 today. Uh, and just a quick reminder what Spawn Daily is. We're basically uh, reading all the Spawn main series as well as all the mini series and one shots and other um, tangential series, companion series, and what have you. Not in a publication order, but in a chronological order that makes sense. So there is um, a link to a reading order, a Google Doc in the show notes. Uh, it was put together by a gentleman named Blake Whitlow. And it, you can go and take a look. You can see what we've read so far. You can see what we have um, to read moving forward. And this is all in the hopes of getting caught up, reading Spawn, being able to read the new stuff as it comes out. And we'll have interviews and that kind of stuff on Spawn Daily once in a while. We've had Todd McFarlane on. We've had uh, Erica Schultz on. And I'm really trying to reach out to um, a lot of the people that wrote a lot of the classic stuff uh, back in the day to get their opinions on it. So, you know, I've had creators like uh, Brian Michael Bendis, who wrote Sam and Twitch, and uh, Paul Jenkins, who wrote Spawn the Undead. They've been on the show before, so I know them, and I'm hoping to get them on to, uh, to talk about it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into uh, issue 86. Um, it's, a, it's a fantastic issue. We saw uh, the end of the Kincaid story arc, if you will, the Billy Kincaid arc that took up the last three or four issues. It was a, a very monumental, I would say, uh, arc in terms of how it's affecting Spawn and the other members of the supporting cast going forward. Um, you know, Billy was a, a really evil guy, right, and, and a character that was in the earliest issues of Spawn. And so to have him come back, I thought it was it was pretty interesting what was done, and I don't think that we've seen the last of the him. And a lot of you longtime Spawn fans may know that already, uh, but since I've only read up to this point, I I don't know when or if he comes back. But uh, I don't think we've seen the last of uh, him. But regardless, his impact and the impacts of what happened, how he was defeated, uh, like I said, are are really going to impact uh, Spawn and. Um, and Twitch, it seems like the most going forward, uh, perhaps Sam as well. So we'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see how that all plays out. So uh, let me go ahead and put the book up so you guys can check it out. Really fantastic cover there from uh, Greg Capullo. McFarlane, I think, handles the inks. Spawn's fighting somebody. It almost looks like a um, chapel, but no skull on his face. Uh, so not exactly sure from the... Uh, from the cover who this might be but uh, as we get into the first page as often is the case we've got not only uh, the credits but also a summary for what happened in Spawn 85 so the plot is from Holguin and Todd McFarlane story credited to Brian Holguin pencils by Greg Capullo inks by Danny Mickey copy editing and lettering by Tom Orzakowski colors by Dan Kemp and uh, Brian Haverlin and you can see there uh, cover art Capullo and McFarlane, as I said, and then dedicated to Brian Michael Bendis, which is, which is interesting, um, because once we get done with uh, with this issue, no, the next issue of Spawn, rather, uh, we're going to dive into some Curse of the Spawn with a Sam and Twitch story, and then we're going to get into Sam and Twitch proper, the first volume of Sam and Twitch, which was written by Bendis. So I'm assuming that's why this dedication is there. This was around the time when Bendis was probably um, pitching or, or had come on to the Sam and Twitch and was uh, was writing it, and uh, it was getting ready to be released. So uh, as we turn to the first page, it's kind of gross here, uh, but but very well drawn by um, by Capullo. We see the body of Rafferty, who was the innocent cop that was um, possessed by Billy Kincaid in the last issue ended up being shot by Twitch, uh, and that's how they defeated Billy because they were in the dead zone where Hell's powers didn't have um, any sway. But when you look at the picture here, if you look close, it's it's pretty gross, right? You've got um, you've got rats chewing on the flesh. You've got what looks to be cockroaches. You've got flies. You've got maggots. Uh, you've got, you know, the lower um, portion of the screen there, you've got... Um, rats feeding on his entrails it's it's pretty gross but you know this is what happens when you leave a dead body out to, to rot i suppose and uh spawn's giving us a voiceover saying 
your worm food in the end, that's all anybody is. You're just another slab of cold dead meat. Uh, you know, one way or the other, everything dies ex except me. And he's, you know, kind of lamenting his existence, right? Because, yeah, he he was kind of dead, but, you know, obviously came back and uh, he's not, not real happy about it. Um, and he's saying that everything he does, he just makes things worse, right? Like he's feeling the guilt for having killed Kincaid and sending him to hell, which allowed him to come back and terrorize and everything that's been happening in the last few issues. Um, and he says, that's the real truth of it, right? So it's, it sort of sounds like he, he's being rhetorical and he's, he's musing and he's talking to himself, but turns out, no, he's talking to Cog. Cog is there standing in the shadows and he says, well, you know, you, you, you can't believe that what, um, what Kincaid said when you're fighting about how you're making everything worse. You got to, got to realize that he was trying to plan your self doubt, right? He's trying to throw you off balance. Uh, he knows you well enough to know you, that you have these doubts. Um, he's trying to, you know, control you and, and win the fight. Uh, you can't really believe that, that that's the case, that everything you touch is worse. Um, and, Spawn says, it's funny, I was thinking the same thing about you, right? Like you're saying he was just saying stuff to try to manipulate me. It, isn't that what you do, Cog? Um, people died. People died, Cog. Like there are a lot more souls in hell tonight because of me, because he killed Billy Kincaid is what he's referring to. Um, and Cog is trying to make him, I guess he's trying to make him feel better. But, but again, um, like Spawn said, Cog has his own his own plans, right? He has his own um, wants and desires. He has, uh, we know, he, you know, he told Spawn during the last arc that he wants Spawn to try to take out Malbolgia. That would be the one way that Cog could be freed from being a Hellspawn, or being this Hellspawn sort of stuck in between, right? Like Hell can't claim him, but he can't go to heaven either. He's just kind of living this existence in limbo on Earth. Um, and so, you know, the last thing that he he wants is Spawn to be, you know, despondent. He wants Spawn to uh, to take on Malbolgia to um, help free Cog himself. Um, but that's the whole point. Spawn's like, yeah, you just want what you want. You don't really care about me, you know, one way or the other. So, you know, Cog is trying to to put him at ease. Um, but again, it's a it comes from a very selfish place. He says. You need to keep your eye on the big picture. You know, wars have casualties. You're a soldier. You know, you should understand that. And Spawn, Spawn's reply is, you know, the more I see of the big picture, the less I like of it. And he, and he kind of has a point, right? Um, because if you step back and, and look at it objectively, he he does sort of make sense here. Things have been worse. Things are worse for Terry and Wanda than they were before. Uh, things are worse for uh, Bootsy. He's not even on Earth anymore. Things are worse for... Bobby, things are worse for um, you know all the people that got killed by um, by Billy Kincaid. Things are worse for Sam and Twitch. So you know you, you kind of can see where he's coming from. So he um, he tells uh, Cog, you know what? Leave me alone. Your words aren't going to change anything. Um, you know, just just let me be. And as he's sitting there in his throne, there's this voice from off panel that says. Uh, look at you, you goddamn pussy. You're pathetic. And obviously this is a, you know, a surprise to Spawn to have anybody talk to him like that. Uh, and we get um, on the next page, full page splash of this soldier. Same soldier that it appeared he was fighting on the cover. Um, this guy's very muscular, African-American. He's armed to the teeth. You know, he's got a bandolier with, um, with shotgun, what looks like shotgun shells. He's got a couple of guns on each hip. He's got uh, grenades. He's got a, another gun, you know, draped across his shoulder. Um, and he's admonishing Spawn saying, you know, it's about time you got off your ass and did something like quit, you know, bitching all the time and, and do something. And Spawn, again, Spawn's taken aback by this. He's not used to people talking to him like this. He's like, you, what, you know, who, who do you think you are? Um, and he says, don't, don't play with me. You know who I am. And they get right in each other's face. Again, a very, um, awesome, uh, panel there from, uh, from Capullo. And he said, what is this? A game, a trick, the latest Malbolgia manipulation. And, uh, 
this African American guy responds, this soldier responds, uh, no, no trick, believe me, it's time you and me had a heart to heart. Come on. Uh, and he, he says, follow me, and he takes off running. And, he, and a little surprised um, that Spawn's just going to follow this guy, doesn't really know who he is, or or maybe he does, right? Maybe uh, instinctively he does, and that's what causes him to uh, to go ahead and follow this guy. So um, they come out of the alley, and rather than being like in the city, they're in, uh, they're in a cemetery. Um, and Spawn's like, where have you taken me? He's like, to nowhere. I uh, would have thought you'd recognize it, though. Just got a little further to go, and he's pointing to this tombstone on the hill, and uh, it's it's Al Simmons' tombstone. We see the name on the on the tombstone, and he uh, he says, "Okay, uh, Spawn, quiz. Whose grave is this?" And Spawn says, "Mine." You know, that's that's his perception, and the guy knocks Spawn on his ass, and he says, "No, it's mine." So this guy, this soldier, is actually Al Simmons, uh, and he says. You know, to be perfectly honest, I'm sick to death of you pissing all over it, right? Um, you're not me, and you need to get that through your thick uh, head. You should have realized it a long time ago. It's time to bury the past. You know, you yourself said it. Everything dies, uh, even me. So, you know, why do you still think that you're me, basically, is, is what he's saying. And, again, Spawn, very surprised by this, um, says, yeah, this is a lie. This is a trick. This is just, uh, you know, Mal Bolger trying to, to manipulate me so, or it's a, some other enemy who's trying to, you know, to make me feel weak. Um, you know, it's, it's not true. You're not really me. Um, and the soldier, Al Simmons, says, well, then why are you shaking? It's because you're scared to accept this. You're scared of dealing with me. You're scared of the real deal. Um, that's why you let that old man boss you around. You know, you let Cog tell you what to do. So you don't have to feel responsible for your choices, but it makes me sick, man. You used to be so proud and you were a man of action, but you're just a waste. You don't do anything. You don't have any agency. And, and you know, this is something that we've talked about in past reviews of Al just uh, or Spawn, I should say, being impetuous, right? And and just reactionary and not having a plan and not trying to find answers and just kind of letting life happen to him rather than trying to lead any kind of uh, life. And so, you know, Spawn's kind of lamenting, like, you don't understand. Um, and Al Simmons says, what, 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 trying to understand you, trying to find your your true path? Is that what you're doing? Are you doing the best you can? Um, the, you know, the problem is that, you know, you say you've been doing your best and, and trying to do everything, but you yourself admit that everything you touch turns to crap. Your best doesn't seem to be very good. Um, but, you know, I know all about your best, but, you know, the hell brought you back and you know look at all the the bad stuff that's happened basically you know uh how many people are, are dead while you're trying to to work out your identity issues uh, we get this montage piece from capullo we see uh gravano there we see overkill we see um Cygor, um just all kinds of all kinds of people and uh al simmons goes on to say you know i'd feel better if uh, you you're learning from this, if, you, if this was like your own personal growth plan, um, but you're not like all this stuff's happening and nothing's getting any better. We also see the on the next page, another montage piece. We see the two boys whose father was abusing them. We see Cyan. We see a violator. We see the freak. We see B Billy Kincaid. Again, all people whose lives are, you could argue, worse. I um, mean, most of them are worse off. Maybe the boys are, you know, they're not being um, abused by their father anymore, but didn't exactly go well when they came to New York and looked for Spawn. So who's to say they might be the one uh, exception where they, they might be slightly better off. Um, but, you know, from, from Al Simmons' perspective, they're not, right? It's like ha how many people have been touched by a whirlwind of crap, this is what he puts it, from having you uh, in their life. So... Uh, there hasn't been a single battle you've quote unquote won that hasn't blown up in your face. Uh, you even dragged Wanda, who you professed her love, uh, and her kid into this you know horrible life of yours. Um, and all you do is mope around in the alley. You know, being a good soldier isn't about doing what's easy. And there was a time when you when you knew that you knew you had to make the hard choices. Um, and Spawn replies, "So what do I do?" 
And and that's part of the problem, right? Like once again, he's looking at somebody else for the answers. Like you got to look within, man. You got to figure it out. That's that's the whole point. Um, can't just have somebody that you think is going to answer for you. Um, and Simmons even said that's your problem to figure out what you're supposed to do. But maybe you can start by being your own man, right? Um, stop being a sidekick already. Um, pick a side. You know, are you going to be on the side of heaven? Or are you going to be on the side of hell? Um, or, or, or quit. Don't be on anybody's side. Don't even play their game. You know, we, we were tra- taught to attack and retreat and regroup and re- reevaluate anything but surrender, anything but just let life happen to you. Um, you know, you, I look at those chains you're wearing and it's like you're, you're a slave, not just to your circumstances, but also to your past. You won't let it go. And it, that's time that you do let it go. Uh, and Spawn starts to say, but what do I do? And before he can even finish the sentence, Al Simmons says, about Wanda, right? That's the thing that brought uh, Spawn back. It's the thing that he cares most about in the world. Um, and Al Simmons says, you still don't get it, do you? She's not your wife. She's not your woman. She's my woman, not yours. When Terry doesn't come home at night, I'm the one that she's dreaming of, not you. Um, you know, the thought of you makes her skin crawl because we do know that Wanda has met Spawn, um, and she's very fear- fearful of him. And when he says that, when Al Simmons says that, you know, the thought of you scares her, makes her skin crawl. Spawn whacks him and says, "Shut up! Shut your damn mouth!" Um, and uh, Al Simmons continue to, continues to goad him, says, uh, "What's the matter? Truth hurt." Uh, and Spawn just in in rage just starts beating on him. Uh, and says, you know, I'll show you hurt. Um, I don't care who you are, you know, where you come from. If you come from the devil, Malbolgia, bad dream, goddamn ghost of Christmas past, I'll make you sorry, you know, you ever existed. And uh, he, he just sees he's like beaten Terry almost to death here. And he, he kind of, his rage is spent. He, he looks down at the mess that he's made of Terry's face and, uh, and, and Al Simmons says to him, go ahead, finish it, destroy me. Uh, and, and you see Spawn hesitating, like realizing what he's, what he's done. He says, I, 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 can't, I can't, I can't, you know, it'd be like killing himself because deep down he knows this guy is really him or, or, you know, maybe what's left of his human spirit. If you can say there's, uh, there's any of it left. Um, and it, it's, it's tough, you know, it's, it's tough for him to, um, to say goodbye to, you know, to who he was before. Um, so uh, as he's, uh, as he's laying there dying, I mean, he's dying, right? There's no, no other way to put it. Um, the, uh, the Al Simmons, as he's expiring, says, um, you, you don't have to see it's the only way for both of us. Like you've, you've got to let me go. You, you don't, you don't have to, you know, finish me off as it were, uh, I've already pretty much done it, um, uh, by already, you know, basically beating him to death. Um, and it's interesting to think like, so is this, was this truly Al Simmons? Was it a ghost? Is it all in Spawn's uh, mind? Um, but he, he does, as Al Simmons uh, passes away, whatever he was, a ghost, a vision, a uh, hallucination, uh, Spawn does say, you know, rest easy, soldier. Um, and, you know, maybe this is finally going to allow him to uh, to move forward. Um, and it's, a, it's another powerful image here, full page spread, as Spawn is cradling the, the broken body of Al Simmons, who he's just just killed. Um, but again, maybe that's what he needs to do, even if it's just symbolically to move on, to let go of the past. Um, and he cries out, what have I done? And so um, as he stands up, the body floats away into dust. And uh, and Spawn says, you know what, you're right. You know, he makes the the realization, said, whatever, whoever you were, whatever you were, um, you know, I hope you're now at peace. God knows you've earned it, and if anybody would know, it would be Spawn, right? In his former life as Al Simmons, um, he had to do a lot of horrible crap, so he knows that that soldier is finally 
earn some peace. You know, peace Spawn won't have because he gave up his peace to come back for uh, for Wanda. So he walks away from the grave, and over his shoulder, we see um, Al Simmons once again made whole, standing there in uniform, decorated. He salutes Al, or salutes Spawn, I should say, um, and Spawn salutes back. And then he disappears. You can see in the bottom panel there where you see the tree and the tombstone and uh, the uh, the moon behind and uh, and Al Simmons is no longer there. So at least Spawn has made a decision and he goes back to the alley and he tells uh, all of the denizens, uh, all the inhabitants of Rat City, uh, listen up, everybody out of the alleys immediately. He's like, what are you what are you talking about? He's like, take whatever you want. I don't care. But I'm telling you, get out. I won't be responsible for anybody who lags behind. And they're, they're like asking questions. And this guy's been their friend. Like, what are you, what are you talking about? And he's like, I said move now. And he throws a, um, he throws a dumpster at them to get them to move. Um, and probably of all the people that are there, the one that's most confused is Bobby, right? Um, the one that's probably been closest to, uh, to Al Simmons since he's, been living in Rat City, and he's like, Spawn, buddy, you know, what are you up to? And Spawn says, I'm doing something I should have done a long time ago. I'm, I'm cleaning house. Bobby's like, cleaning house? Like, what does that mean? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't get it. Spawn's like, you don't need to get it. You just need to get out. But Bobby, you know, we know how um, empathetic he is, and he really wants to try to understand. He wants to try to help Spawn. He thinks of him as a, as a friend. He's like, but well, where am I supposed to go? And Spawn says, well, I don't care. Uh, just get out of here. And Bobby's like, come on, Al, tell me what's wrong. Um, what you know, what's going on? And he, and he goes, Al, Al. And Spawn finally turns on him and says, Al Simmons is dead. Never speak that name to me again. I am Spawn. And you can tell by the look on his face that he's not um, messing around. So uh, he heads over to where he has kept his throne. And you know, you could argue this is the, the place of moping, <laughs> if you want to give it a title place where he goes and sits and laments uh, and allows life to just either happen to him or pass him by, you know, depending on your perspective. Um, but he hasn't had any agency. He hasn't been taking matters into his own hands. And so he smashes everything. He smashes the throne, um, smashes everything that, that's around there. This is not going to be the place where he goes to just hide out from the world anymore. And uh, Cagliostro says, uh, Spawn, what are you doing? And uh, he says, I'm taking matters into my own hands. I refuse to be a pawn in other people's games. Uh, from now on, the only rules that are going to, uh, that I'm going to live by are going to be my own rules. So, I mean, he might not be, he might not be going the right way about this. Um, I mean, he was pretty harsh to people that, that really cared about him, these denizens of Rat City. But at the same time, you know, he's looking objectively at everything that's happened since he's been back and, if all the people around him get hurt, then don't have people around him, you know? So he may be doing it for the best of attention. We just, we don't realize, um, you know, again, he's, as much as he's taking agency, he is also following his nature of being impetuous and, and maybe not thinking these things through. Um, but when Cog asks him, well, you know, what, what does that mean? Uh, you know, you're going to follow your own rules. Like enough is enough. Um, you're not thinking clearly. Don't you understand what's you know what's at stake? Obviously, the battle between uh, heaven and hell is what uh, Cog is referring to. And uh, and again, Spawn's had it. He, he's sort of, in a way, detaching himself from all his previous uh, relationships. He says, "Unhand me, old man. Um, you're you're in no position to demand anything, and you better get out what you still can as well." Um, and Coglass was like, "Damn you! What are you doing?" Uh, and he and Spawn says, "Well, isn't it obvious, Cogliostro? I quit." Uh, and we get that incredible final page here from uh, Capullo, where it it sort of looks like Spawn is allowing all his uh, all his energy to dissipate. Has he, you know, in his quitting, has he just said, "Okay, I'm going to basically." release all my energy, all the energy that, that keeps me alive. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's interesting. Uh, but he's definitely surrounded by necroplasmic energy here. Um, and if he has quit, does that mean that the war between heaven and hell is about to start? Because we know that war is, um, 
is destined to start once uh, Al Simmons is no longer a hell spawn on Earth. So really interesting what has come from this uh, this story arc with uh, with Billy Kincaid because basically that that's been kind of the the impetus of this right this is that's how it all started. Spawn feels so incredibly guilty, no more guilty than he's felt um, because of all the people that have uh, been killed due to the choices he made that allowed Billy Kincaid to, to come back and uh, again just really interesting situation. Will will we see Spawn again? Is this the end? I mean, <laughs> the thing goes on for another 300 issues, right? Uh, nearly. Um, so, obviously, we know he's not really gone, but, again, curious what people were thinking back in the day when they read this. Um, getting close to 100, could that be the, you know, the planned end of the series? Um, so, pretty interesting. Uh, definitely an emotional issue. Like I said, uh, a lot to do with... Uh, Billy Kincaid, did Spawn really kill the part of Al Simmons that, that was left in him? Uh, those were powerful scenes as well, uh, especially when he's holding the, cradling the body of Al Simmons. So, yeah, we'll have to see how this all plays out uh, in the next issue, because, like I said, once uh, we finish up the next issue, then we're going to go into some Sam and Twitch stuff for quite a while. Um, so it'll be interesting when and if or how Spawn uh, returns. We'll have to wait for a few episodes to see how that all uh, plays out. So anyway, that's going to do it for this episode, everybody. Really appreciate you joining me as always. Uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss any of the content. I'm getting really close. I think I'm like only three subscribers away from, uh, from being able to monetize from 500 subscribers. So really appreciate you guys uh, subscribing. So uh, ring the notification bell. You know when new episodes drop. Uh, you can leave comments. I love hearing what uh, people's thoughts are about particular uh, issues as we cover them. Um, if you want to listen to the other uh, Comic Source content, obviously all the new stuff that comes out this year is also on YouTube, but if you're an audio-only person or you know, like to listen to podcasts while you're driving or that sort of thing, you can always go to your favorite podcast platform or app, do a search for the Comic Source and subscribe, and you've got over 2,000 uh, episodes of comic reviews and interviews and coverage and what have you, convention coverage uh, from uh, from the past 12 years to listen to. So go ahead and check that out. Uh, again, we appreciate the support. Thanks for joining us as always, and we will talk to you next time.